Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's special presentation with Dhruva on why ransomware isn't your only problem. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Our next guests are Stephen Manley, Chief Technology Officer of Dhruva, and Anjan Srinivas, who is the General Manager and Vice President of Product Management at Dhruva. Gentlemen, you got the keys to the kingdom, the technology, ransomware, data resilience. This is the topic, the IDC white paper that you guys put together with IDC really kind of na nails it out. I want to get into it right away. Welcome to this segment. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Great to be Thank here, you. John. So what's your thoughts on the survey's conclusion? Um, obviously the res resilience is huge. Ransomware is, continues to thunder away at businesses and causes a lot of problems. Uh, disruption, I mean, just it's endless uh, ransomware problems. What's your thoughts on the con conclusion? So I'll, I'll say the, the thing that pops out to me is, is on the one hand, everybody who sees the survey who reads it's going to say, well, that's obvious. Uh, of course, ransomware continues to be a problem. Cyber resilience is an issue that's plaguing everybody. But, but I think when you dig deeper, and, there, and there's a lot of subtleties to look into, but, but one of the things that, that I hear on a daily basis from the customers is, it's because the problem keeps evolving. It's not as if the threat was a static thing to just be solved and you're done because the threat keeps evolving, it remains top of mind for everybody because it's so hard to keep up with, with what's happening in terms of the attacks. And I think the other important thing to note, John, is that people are grappling with this ransomware attack all of a sudden where they were still grappling with a lot of legacy in their own environment. So they were not prepared for the advanced techniques that these ransomware attackers were bringing to market. It's almost like these ransomware attackers had a huge leg up in terms of technology that they had in their favor while keeping the lights on was keeping IT away from all the tooling that needed to do. And a lot of people are even still wondering when that happens next time, what do I even do? So clearly not very surprising. Clearly, I think it's here to stay. And I think as long as people don't retool for a modern era of data management, this is going to stay this way. Yeah, I mean, I hear this all the time in our CUBE conversations with practitioners. You know, there, it's kind of like the security problem. Give me more tools, I'll buy anything that comes in the market. I'm desperate. There's definitely a tension, but it doesn't seem like people are satisfied with the tooling that they have. Can you guys share kind of your insights into what's going on, on the product side? Because, you know, people claim that they have tools that find points of, of recovery opportunities, but they can't get there. So it seems to be that there's a confidence problem here in the market. What, how do you guys see that? Because I think this is where the rubber meets the road with ransomware, because it is it is a moving train, it's always changing, but it doesn't seem this confidence. Can you guys talk about that? What's your reaction? Yeah, let me jump in first and Steven can add to it. What happens is, I think this is a panic buying and they have accumulated this tooling now just because somebody said it could solve your problem but they haven't had a chance to take a relook from a ground up perspective to see where are the bottlenecks, where are the vulnerabilities and which tooling set needs to lie where, where does the logic need to reside? And what at Dhruva we are watching people do and people do it successfully is that as they have adopted Dhruva technology, which is ground up built for the cloud and really built in a way which is you know, driven at a data insight level where we have people even monitoring our service for anomalies and activities that are suspicious, we know where we need to play a role in really kind of mitigating this ransomware. And then there is a whole plethora of ecosystem players that kind of combine to really, really finish the story, so to say, right? So I think this has been a panic buying situation. This is like, get me any help you can give me. And I think as this settles down and people really understand that, longer term as they really build out a true defense mechanism, they need to think really ground up. They will start to really see the value of technologies like Dhruva and try to identify the right set of ecosystem to really bring together to solve it meaningfully. You know, yeah, I, 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 I was going to say, I mean, one, one of the one of the really interesting things in the survey for me, and, and, and for a moment, you know, a little more than a moment, it made me think was, the, the large number of respondents who said, I've got a really efficient, well-run backup environment, who then on basically the next question said, and I have no confidence that I can recover from a ransomware attack. And you scratch your head and you think, well, if your backup environment is so good, why do you have such low confidence? And, and, and I think that's the moment when we, we dug deeper and we realized, 
if you've got a traditional architecture, and let's face it, the disk-based architecture has been around for almost two decades now in terms of disk-based backup, you can have that tuned to the hilt. That can be running as efficiently, efficiently as you want it. But it was built before the ransomware attacks, before, before all these cyber issues you know, really start hitting companies. And so I have this really well-run traditional backup environment that is not at all built for these modern threat vectors. And so that's really why customers are saying, I'm doing the best I can. But as Anjan pointed out, the architecture, the tooling isn't there to support what what problems I need to solve today. Yeah, great point. And so, yeah. Well, that's a great point. And before we get into the customer side, I want to get to in a second. You know, I interviewed Jasper, the, the founder and CEO, many years ago, even before the pandemic. And you mentioned modern. You guys have always had the cloud uh, with Druva. This is huge. Now that you're past the pandemic, what is that modern cloud edge that you guys have? Because that's a great point. A lot of stuff was built kind of back in recovery, bolted on, not really kind of designed into the the current state of the infrastructure and the uh, cloud native application modern environment we're seeing right now is a huge issue. Yeah, I think I think it's it's to me there's there's three things that come up over and over and over again as as we talk to people in terms of you know being built in cloud being cloud native why is it an advantage? The first one is is security and ransomware and 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 we can go deeper but the most obvious one that always comes up is every single backup you do with Druva is air-gapped, off-site, managed under a separate administrative domain so that you're not retrofitting any sort of air-gapped network and buying another appliance or setting up your own cloud environment to manage this. Every backup is ransomware protected, guaranteed. I think the second advantage is the scalability. And you know, this, this certainly plays into account as your, your business grows, or in some cases, as you shrink or repurpose workloads, you're only paying for what you use. But it also plays a, a big role, again, when you start thinking of ransomware recoveries, because we can scale your recovery in cloud on premises as much or as little as you want. And then I think the third one is, we're seeing a, you know, basically things evolving, new workloads, data sprawl, new threat vectors. And one of the nice parts of being a SaaS service in the cloud is you're able to roll out new functionality every two weeks and there's no upgrade cycle. There's no waiting. You know, the customer doesn't have to say, well, I need it six months in the lab before I upgrade it. And, and it's an 18 month, 24 month cycle before the functionality releases. You're getting it every two weeks and it's backed by Druva to make sure it works. That's awesome. On John, you know, you got the, uh, the product side you know, it's a challenging job because you have so many customers asking for things probably on the roadmap. You probably can go hour for that one. But I want to get your thoughts on what you're hearing and seeing from customers. You know, we just reviewed the IDC with Phil. How are you guys responding to your customers' needs? Because it seems that it's highly accelerated on the, probably on the feature request, but also structurally as, as ransomware continues to evolve. What are you hearing? What's the key customer need? How are you guys responding? Yeah, actually I have, two things that I hear very clearly when I talk to customers. One, I think after listening to their security problems and their vulnerability challenges, because we see customers and help customers who are getting challenged by ransomware on a weekly basis. And what I find that this problem is not just a technology problem, it's an operating model problem. So in order to really secure themselves, they need a security operating model and a lot of them haven't figured out that security operating model in totality. Now, where we come in as Dhruva is that we are providing them the cloud operating model and a data protection operating model combined with a data insights operating model, which all fit into that overall security operating model that they are really owning and they need to manage and operate because this is just not about a piece of technology. On top of that, I think our customers are getting challenged by all the same challenges of not just spending time on keeping the lights on, but innovating faster with faster with less. And that has been this age old problem, do more with less. But in this, in this whole, they're like trying to innovate in the middle of the war, so to say, right? The war is happening, they're getting attacked, but there's also net new uh, shadow IT challenges that's forcing them to make sure that they can manage all the new applications that are getting developed in the cloud. And there is, uh, thousands of SaaS applications that they're consuming, not knowing which data is critical to their success and which ones to protect and govern and secure. So all of these things are coming at them at 
you know, 100 miles per hour while they are just, you know, trying to live one day at a time. And unless they really develop this overall security operating model, helped by cloud native technologies like Dhruva that really providing them a true cloud native model of really giving uh, like a touchless and an invisible protection infrastructure, not just beyond backups, beyond just the data protection that we all know of into this kind of this mindset of kind of being able to look at where each of those functionalities need to lie. That's where I think they're grappling with. Now Dhruva is clearly helping them with keep up to pace with the public cloud innovations that they need to do and how to protect data. We just launched our EC2 offering to protect EC2 uh, virtual machines back in AWS. And we are going to be continuing to evolve that to further many services that public clouds offer because our customers are really kind of consuming them at breakneck speed. So the new workloads, the new security capabilities, love that. Good good call out there. Steven, there's still the issue of the disruption side of it. You guys have a guarantee. There's a cost of ownership as you get more tools. Can you talk about that angle of it? Because this is, you got new workloads, you got the new security needs. What's yeah, the disruption so, so the, impact? Because <laughs> you, know, you want to avoid that. How much is it going to cost you? And you guys have this guarantee. Can you explain that? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Druva launched our $10 million data resiliency guarantee. And, and for us, you know, there were there were really two key parts to this. The first, obviously, is ten million dollars means that uh, you know again we're we're willing to put our money where our mouth is, and and that's a big deal, right? That that uh, that we're willing to back this with the guarantee. But then the second part, and, and and this is the part that I think reflects that that sort of model that Anjan was talking about. We we sort of look at this and we say, you know. The goal of Druva is to do the job of protecting and securing your data for you so that you as a customer don't have to do it anymore. And so the guarantee actually protects you against multiple types of risks, all with SLAs. So uh, everything from you know, your data is going to be recoverable in the case of a ransomware attack. Okay, that's good. Of course, for it to be recoverable, we're also guaranteeing you know, your, backup, uh, your backup success rate. We're also guaranteeing the availability of the service. You know, we're, we're guaranteeing that the data that we're storing for you can't be compromised or leaked uh, externally. And you know, we're guaranteeing the long-term durability of the data so that if you back up with us today and you need to recover 30 years from now, that data is going to be recovered. So we wanted to really attack the end-to-end -end, you know, risks that, that, that affect our customers. Cybersecurity is a big deal, but it is not the only problem out there. And the only way for this to work is to have a service that can provide you SLAs across all of the risks, because that means, again, as a SaaS vendor, we're doing the job for you, so you're buying results as opposed to technology. That's great, great point. Ransomware isn't the only problem. That's the title of this presentation, but it's a big one. <laughs> People are concerned about it, so great stuff. In the last five minutes, uh, guys, if you don't mind, I'd love to have you share what's on the horizon for Druva. Um, you mentioned the new workloads on John. You mentioned this new security, you're hearing shift left. DevOps is now the developer model. They're running IT. You got data and security teams now stepping in and trying to be as vo high velocity as possible for the developers and enterprises. What's on the horizon for Druva? What trends is the company watching and how are you guys putting that together to stay ahead in the marketplace and the competition? Yeah, I think um, listening to our customers, what we realize is they need help with the public cloud, number one. I think that's a big wave of consumption. People are consolidating their data centers, moving to the public cloud. They need help in expanding data protection, which becomes the basis of a lot of the security operating model that I talked about, they need that first from Dhruva before they can start to get into much more advanced level of insights and analytics on that data to protect themselves and secure themselves and do interesting things with the data. So we are expanding our coverage on multiple uh, fronts there. The second uh, key thing is to really bring together a very insightful presentation layer which I think is very unique to Dhruva because only we can look at multiple tenants, multiple customers, because we are a SaaS vendor and look at insights and give them best practices and guidances and analytics that nobody else can give. There's no silo anymore because we are able to take a good big vision view and now help our customers with insights that otherwise that information map is completely missing. So we are able to guide them down a path where they can optimize which workloads need what kind of protection and then how to secure them. So that is the second level of 
insights and analytics that we are building. And there's a whole plethora of security offerings that we are going to build uh, all the way from a feature level where we have things like uh, recycle bin that's already available to our customers today to prevent any anomalous behavior and attacks that would delete their backups and then they still have a way to recover from it. But also things to curate and get back to that point in time where it is safe to recover and help them with a sandbox, which they can recover confidently knowing it's not going to jeopardize them again and reinfect the whole environment again. So there's a whole bunch of things coming, but the key themes are public cloud, data insights and security. And that's where my focus is to go and get those features delivered. And Steven can add a few more things around uh, services that uh, Steven is looking to build and launch. Sure, so so yeah, so, so John, I think one of the other areas that we see just an enormous groundswell of interest. So, so public cloud is important, but there are more and more organizations that are running hundreds, if not thousands of SaaS applications. And a lot of those SaaS applications have data. So there's the obvious things like Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, but we're also seeing a lot of interest in protecting Salesforce because if you think about it, you know, if you if if someone uh, you know deletes some really important records in Salesforce, that's that's actually kind of the record of your business. And so, you know, we're looking at more and more SaaS application protection and and really getting deep in that application awareness. It's not just about backup and recovery when you look at something like like a Salesforce or something like a Microsoft 365. You do want to look into sandboxing. You want to you want to look into long term archival because and this is the new record of the business. What used to be in your on-premises databases, that all lives in cloud and SaaS applications now. So that's a really big area of investment for us. The second one, just to echo what, what Anjan said is, you know, one of the great things of being a SaaS provider is I have metadata that spans across thousands of customers and tens of billions of backups a year. And I'm tracking all sorts of interesting information that is going to enable us to do things like make backups more autonomous so that customers, again, I want to do the job for them. We'll do all the tuning. We'll do all the management for them. Uh, to be able to better detect ransomware attacks, better respond to ransomware attacks because we're seeing across the globe. And then of course, being able to give them more insight into what's happening in their data environment so they can get a better security posture before any attack happens. Because let's face it, if you can set your, your data up more cleanly, you're going to be a lot less worried and a lot less exposed when that attack happens. So we want to be able to, again, cover those SaaS applications in addition to the public cloud. And then we want to be able to use our metadata and use our analytics and use this massive pipeline we've got to deliver value to our customers, not just charts and graphs, but actual services that enable them to focus their attention on other parts of the business. That's great stuff from John. And, and remember, John, I think all this while keeping things really easy to consume, consumer grade UI, APIs, and the, the really the power of SaaS as a service, yeah. uh, uh, simplicity to kind of continue on amongst kind of keeping these complex technologies together. Andre, that's a great call out. I was going to mention ease of use is, and self-service, big part of the developer and IT experience expected, it's the table stakes. Love the analytic angle. I think that just brings the scale to the table and faster time to value to get to learn best practices. But at the end of the day, automation, cross cloud protection and security to protect and recover. This is huge. And this is a big part of not only just protecting against ransomware and other things, but really being fast and being uh, agile. So really appreciate the insights. Thanks for sharing uh, on this segment, really under the hood and really kind of the value of of uh, the product. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, there it is. You got the expert talking about under the hood, the product, the value, the future of what's going on with Druva and the future of cloud native protecting and recovering. This is what it's all about. It's not just ransomware they have to worry about. In a moment, Dave Vellante will give you some closing thoughts on the subject here. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in high tech enterprise coverage. As organizations migrate their business processes to multi-cloud environments, they still face numerous threats and risks of data loss. With a growing number of cloud platforms and fragmented applications, it leads to an increase in data silos, sprawl, and management complexity. As workloads become more diverse, it's challenging to effectively manage data growth, infrastructure, and resource costs across multiple cloud deployments. Using numerous backup vendor solutions from multiple cloud platforms can lead to management complexity. 
More importantly, the lack of centralized visibility and control can leave you exposed to security vulnerabilities, including ransomware that can cripple your business. The Druva Data Resiliency Cloud is the only 100% SaaS data resiliency platform that provides centralized, secure, air-gapped, and immutable backup and recovery. With Druva, your data is safe with multiple layers of protection and is ready for fast recovery from cyber attacks, data corruption, or accidental data loss. Through a simple, easy-to-manage platform, you can seamlessly protect fragmented, diverse data at scale across public clouds and your business-critical SaaS applications. Druva is the only 100% SaaS vendor that can manage, govern, and protect data across multiple clouds and business-critical SaaS applications. It supports not just backup and recovery, but also data resiliency across high-value use cases such as e-discovery, sensitive data governance, ransomware, and security. No other vendor can match Druva for customer experience, infinite scale, storage optimization, data immutability, and ransomware protection. The Druva Data Resiliency Cloud. Your data, always safe, always ready. Visit druva.com today to schedule a free demo. One of the big takeaways from today's program is that in the scramble to keep business flowing over the past two plus years, a lot of good technology practices have been put into place, but there's much more work to be done. Specifically, because the frequency of attacks is on the rise and the severity of lost, stolen, or inaccessible data is so much higher today, business resilience must be designed into architectures and solutions from the start. It cannot be an afterthought. Well, actually it can be, but you won't be happy with the results. Now, part of the answer is finding the right partners, of course, but it also means taking a systems view of your business, understanding the vulnerabilities and deploying solutions that can balance cost efficiency with appropriately high levels of protection, flexibility, and speed slash accuracy of recovery. You know, we hope you found today's program useful and informative. Remember, this session is available on demand in both its full format and the individual guest segments. All you got to do is go to thecube.net and you'll see all the content or you can go to druva.com. There are tons of resources available, including analyst reports, customer stories. There's this cool TCO calculator. You can find out what pricing looks like and lots more. Thanks for watching Why Ransomware Isn't Your Only Problem, made possible by Druva in collaboration with IDC and presented by theCUBE, your leader in enterprise and emerging tech coverage.